Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with a pregame analysis video of the Seattle Seahawks Week 2 matchup at the Los Angeles Rams. And usually, the way I like to do these pregame analysis videos is just kind of go over the injuries of the game uh, for the Seattle Seahawks mainly, but in this article right here on the Seahawks.com, uh, they actually have uh, the Rams injuries as well. But, um, so getting on straight into it and the injured players, obviously a big story last week after Seattle's victory over Miami was Russell Wilson uh, injuring his ankle after being stepped on from Indomitian Sioux. And, you know, apparently everything this week says that he's a go for today and he's going to play. Uh, nothing really hindered him, apparently, which is awesome to hear. Um, and hopefully he's able to play uh, up to as close as what he can uh, when he's actually healthy. So and we'll see. We'll look out for that, obviously. Jimmy Graham, the game status. So I'm sure he's going to play as well right there. Not available for both of them. Um, CJ Procise is questionable. Nick Vanette and Fetty both out. Uh, those two pieces are actually kind of underrated in terms of um, their availability because you really want to see uh, Vanette and Afedi play because I think obviously Afedi is you know the first round draft pick. You want to see him play at right guard um, instead of Jamarcus Webb, uh, who didn't have the greatest of debuts in the world. And Nick Vanette, the best blocking tight end the Seahawks have to offer. So uh, both those guys out, and that's a little bit unfortunate, especially against a physical defensive line in, this, in the form of the Los Angeles Rams. And Jamarcus Webb questionable for today uh thankfully no defensive injuries at least uh, on, on this right here uh which is awesome to see you want the defense to stay as healthy as physically possible um and, and you know continue to play up to the potential that they you know they always reach it seems um in seattle you know they played very well defensively last week i mean they ba they basically didn't even give give up uh many points at all and earl thomas had a pretty bad day actually and they could have given up more points um but for the most part throughout the game they really held down uh, really tight against Miami uh, aside from a couple of slip outs from Earl Thomas um, and obviously once they got the turnover and good field position they were able to capitalize I think one time so a uh, very good defensive game last week and the defense again looking to play well this week against a team without their uh, number one overall pick and Jared Goff they're starting Case Keenum and they still have Todd Gurley so he's the number one force the defense has to uh, figure out to stop and now for the Rams, you have out with Nelson Spruce, questionable Michael Brockers, uh, EJ Gaines, Todd Gurley's questionable, which is interesting. Um, I don't know what the injury is for that, actually. That's really crazy. I, I thought he was completely healthy. Uh, LaMarcus Joyner, questionable again. Um, so they have some defensive players that are a little bit uh, banged up in Gaines, Brockers, and Joyner. Uh, that could be a little bit tough for them to deal with after coming off that loss to San Francisco in San Francisco, which surprised me in all honesty. I really thought that the Los Angeles Rams were, would, able to, would be able to go into San Francisco and, and get that victory, but that clearly wasn't the case. Um, but yeah, heading into this game, Seattle's looking to take a 2-0 lead going into LA at the Coliseum, uh, the home opener for the Rams. And even if they, they lost last week, they're still going to come out uh, with a, an, an unbelievable crowd, I'm sure, in LA. Um, you know, in the Coliseum, pretty big environment. Uh, nothing the Seattle Seahawks really aren't used to, but um, still, they have to show up and play uh, as usual. And hopefully, Russell Wilson is able to, you know, the, 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 again, the big issue really that's always been with the Rams is the fact that they tend to get to the quarterback. And this is kind of what this article right here is about uh, as well. Um, they discuss, you know, uh, the Rams' disruptive D line and other key matchups right here. Uh, again, a talented D line versus the Seahawks O line. That's pretty much been the story throughout the past like couple of years. Um, last year, they, the Rams actually were able to beat the Seahawks both at home and away. Uh, and a lot of it's because the defensive line was just so ferocious and got so much pressure. And we'll see what happens. The good thing this year that I like about the Seahawks already that I've seen is that they're willing to pass the ball very quickly and get the ball out of Russell Wilson's hand as quick as possible to a safe spot as possible and, and get good yardage out of it. And we saw a lot of bubble screens early on last week in my or at Miami or home to Miami. And hopefully, you know, I'm I'm expecting similar stuff here. Uh, quick passes, you know, that's kind of why they go five wide. So um, they spread the defense out a little bit, and Russell has a wide variety of players that. Uh, the defense has to also account for so they don't have players to rush and if they do rush a lot of players or more than four um, obviously that'll leave one-on-one -on -one coverage with a receiver out there so um, definitely look to see that and the quick passes are going to be vital in this game especially when you don't have Jermaine Effetti playing out there and uh, you know we'll see how the offensive line develops I mean um, I think <clears throat> uh, Justin Brayton and Glowinski are both guys that yeah right here are cable players agree they can be better this week than they were against the Dolphins 
a lot of room to grow. Obviously, you know, they got some young players in there, um, and we'll see what happens. And then defensively, obviously, we know Todd Gurley versus the Seahawks front seven, um, and, and the Rams were the Rotten Niners were able to hold him. So Seattle's going to look to do the same. And I feel like Seattle defensively, especially against the run, they do a, a pretty good job for the most part. Um, so I, I look for them to at least continue to try and execute that today, bringing Cam Chancellor in the box and, and getting some run stops right there. Uh, and the Seahawks receiver Doug Baldwin versus the Rams secondary is a huge key. If he's able to get some things going, that not only opens up the, the run game for the team, but also opens up the game for other receivers. Uh, Tyler Lockett, Jermaine Curris, Paul Richardson, and maybe even Jimmy Graham can get some more uh, time as well, which would be unbelievable to see. Uh, just create even more threats for the um, opposing defense. Really, it's all about time. Honestly, on the offensive line, if Russell is given the time, I think that uh, this can be a great day for Seattle in terms of passing the football. If not, it's going to be it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a rough one. So, uh, not necessarily meaning Seattle's going to lose, but it could be a dogfight at the end of the day in a low-scoring game. And uh, hopefully, a little bit of the run game is established as well. Obviously, you can't you don't want to run. Uh, it's not easy to run too much on this defensive line, but you got to be able to do it. The Rams did it with Carlos Hyde. I think Seattle can do it um, with Thomas Rawls and company. But once again, or that will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. You know, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Talk of the Hog videos. Obviously, coming after this game, gonna be coming out with the post game analysis video of this uh, week two matchup. And yep, that is going to be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. And yep, <laughs> thanks for watching.